so we are working with circles and we are trying to graph them as well as come up with their equations in standard form and interpreting their equations given in standard form. I have worked through a few examples in the last video and I'm going to work through a couple more examples in this one. And these examples are going to be a little bit more difficult than the last video. So let's go ahead and jump right to example four. In this one, it says we are given two endpoints of the diameter. The two endpoints are negative two, four, and six, negative two. And we want to do two things. We want to come up with the equation of this circle in standard form. And we want to graph this circle as well. I encourage you to try and do this one on your own. So this would be the perfect time to pause the video. Okay, I'm actually going to do part B before I do part A, so you can actually see what we're trying to come up with here. And I have this already graphed for you. I have my two endpoints, um, negative two, four is this point up here on the top left, and six, negative two is this point here on the bottom right. And those two points together give me the diameter, which is the distance all the way across my circle. So now you can visualize what it's actually trying to give us and what we should be doing to come up with the equation of the circle of this. We know to come up with the equation of any circle, we need our center point. So we need to come up with a center point here. Now we can guesstimate it by just looking at the graph here, but in math, Guesses are never good enough, and we always want the exact answer, so we need to do some computations to come up with the center. And the other thing that we need to come up with is the radius. So we need the distance from our center to one of these points on the edge of the circle. So those are two calculations that we need to come up with before we can come up with the formula for this problem. So let's start by trying to figure out how we can calculate our center. Well, if we have two endpoints on either edge of the circle, all we need to do is find the midpoint between them, and that would give us the middle of that diameter, and that would also give us the middle of the circle. So to calculate at the center of the circle, we're going to use our midpoint formula between the two given points. Once we have that, we can compute radius one of three ways. So the ways that we can calculate radius is we can calculate the distance between our two points given, the distance of the diameter, and then we can just divide that distance over two. Or we can calculate the distance from the center of our circle to either of our given points. So we can actually calculate distance one of three ways. So the diameter divided by two, or from the radius to our lower right point, or from the radius to our upper left point. And whichever way you prefer is always going to give you the exact answer. So you do not have to do it the same way that I did it. Okay, so I have some room here. Let me first calculate the center. And again, the center is calculated by using my midpoint formula. If you need a reminder of the midpoint formula, remember that it's a point, so I should start with ordered pair format, and I'm looking for the middle, meaning I'm trying to take the average of my two x-coordinates, where I add them up and divide by two, and my average of my two y-coordinates, where I add them up and divide by two. So adding my two x-coordinates, negative two plus six over two, and my two y-coordinates, 4 plus a negative 2 over 2. That gives me 4 over 2 and 2 over 2. So it looks like the center of my circle is at the point 2, 1. Since we have this graph, we can go back and we can see, does that seem to be in a reasonable center of my circle? And we can see that is actually the point that I had estimated in the first place. So I do have my center or my midpoint graphed correctly at the point 2, 
one. Now I'm going to calculate my radius by computing the distance from the center that I just found and either one of the points. So I'm going to use my distance formula up here, and that is the square root of my a squared plus b squared, where I calculate a by subtracting my two x values, and I calculate b by subtracting my two y values. So I'm going to calculate my radius in this problem by computing distance from the center, which I just found, to 1, and either one of my points. So I'm just going to use negative 2, 4. But if I use the other point, it would give me the same answer. So I'm going to plug that in my formula. Radius is equal to square root of my x2 value minus my x1 value squared plus my y2 value minus my y1 value squared. So that gives me negative 4 squared plus 3 squared gives me square root of 16 plus 9, square root of 25. So my radius in this problem comes out to be 5. So if I count 5 in any distance from the center of my circle, I should land on my circle. So let me double check that with my graph as well. So I have my center plotted here. If I count five units to the right, that should put me at the edge of the circle, and that does. So that confirms that I have the correct radius in this circle as well. So since I have my center and my radius, I am perfectly capable of coming up with the equation of the circle. I'm going to do it up here on top, basically because I'm out of room. So I plug my center in for hk, and I plug my radius in for r. So my equation is x minus h, or 2, squared, plus y minus k, or 1, squared. And that is equal to my radius, which is 5 squared. I'm going to go ahead and simplify it here, or my radius squared is 25. So this is my final equation of this circle in standard form. That's where I'm going to finish this video, and in the next video I'm going to do one last example of circles.